Live, this is the News at 10 on NBC3. Texas has a new program to help make sure 16-year-olds are ready to drive. It means getting a driver's license just got tougher. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm James Munoz. There are only five days left to the new year, and if your child doesn't already have a learner's permit to drive, they're probably not going to be happy about the state's new graduated driver's license program. NBC3 reporter Christy Leishner has more on what to expect. Come Tuesday, it'll take longer to get one of these, and it will be harder to get behind one of these. This is your permit, okay? Teens are keeping the Department of Public Safety busy trying to get their learner's permit before January 1st. Because the law is going to change, and she wants to get her license before that law changes. I didn't want to be left behind and not getting my permit and my driver's license. The law requires new drivers to have a learner's permit at least six months before they can get their license. And they must have someone 21 years or older in the car with them at all times. What this law is intended to do is to force and push parental involvement in the students driving so that we will make better drivers on the road. And once they get their license, the restrictions don't stop. For the first six months, new drivers cannot drive with more than one unrelated person under the age of 21. If they've got their regular license, they can drive themselves to school. And they can drive family members to school. But not friends. But not a bunch of their friends. They can take one friend. As the law is written, young drivers can't be pulled over for looking too young. They have to do something else wrong first. Also under the new law, teens cannot drive between the hours of midnight and 5 a.m. unless it's for school, work, or a medical emergency. In Southwest San Angelo, I'm Christy Leishner, NBC3 News. In San Antonio, a baby died after the family's Christmas tree caught fire. Brittany Ana Sabrano died in the fire. Police say the Christmas tree was accidentally set on fire by the victim's four-year-old brother. The mother was able to rescue her four-year-old and two-year-old sons but it was too late for baby Brittany. She died of smoke inhalation. The experts say the longer you keep a Christmas tree around, the greater your chances are of a similar disaster. Christmas trees may look good, but they're always dangerous, and the longer they have to dry up, the more dangerous they become. Some problems with Christmas trees. Um, what a lot of people don't understand is, particularly with open gas-type furnaces, our central heat and air gas-type furnaces, they tend to dry, dry out real quickly, and consequently, they cause a, a real bad fire hazard. Lights, heaters, and even curious kids can cause a Christmas tree fire. The trees catch fire pretty fast, too. In fact, an eight-foot tree can burn in about 30 seconds. The intensity of the flames is a good reason not to use trees as firewood. It's not to be put in a fireplace because uh, it's almost like putting kerosene or a flammable liquid in there because it burns so fast and so hot. The experts say Christmas trees catch fire quickly because of the oils and fine needles. The best way to get rid of your tree is to recycle it. Now Safe Recycling on Knickerbocker wants your old Christmas tree. Safe Recycling dumps the trees at trash away so they can completely dry out. The trees are then mulched into wood chips and brought back to safe recycling for anyone to use. If you want to recycle your tree, you can just take it to 925 Knickerbocker. Safe recycling will be opened Monday through Friday for the next few weeks except on New Year's Day. You know the baby girl kidnapped in Chicago Christmas Eve is home safe and sound tonight. Little Jasmine Anderson was the toddler who vanished at a bus station on Tuesday. Jim Hanchett has more on the story. God bless everyone who helped, and, and thank you very much. Jasmine Anderson's mom, joyful tonight. Her 16-month-old daughter is safe and healthy after a four-day ordeal that began Christmas Eve at Chicago's Greyhound Station. Anderson was here with her two tired and fussy children, three-year-old Alyssa and Jasmine. A woman came forward and offered to hold the baby, then vanished. They're very afford. Today, Chicago police say Jasmine was found at a home in Williamson, West Virginia. They say this photo was taken on Christmas after the kidnapping. They say the woman, Sheila Matthews, abducted the girl because she'd lied to her imprisoned boyfriend that she'd had his baby. They say the boyfriend got out of jail and Matthews, now under arrest and facing federal charges, needed a baby fast. It's definitely premeditated that she wanted to kidnap a baby. 
but that she wanted uh, Jasmine Anderson is not the case. I mean, that just happened to be circumstance. Marcella Anderson says there will be a reunion soon. What are your plans? Hopefully to go home as soon as possible and have our own Christmas. And at her Milwaukee home, Jasmine's Christmas presents are still waiting for her. Jim Hanchett, NBC News. For five years, Texas held the number one spot when it came to executions, but this year the state will have to move over for Oklahoma. This year, the state of Oklahoma had more inmates put to death than Texas. In 2001, there were 18 executions in Oklahoma, one more than the 17 executed here in Texas. Texas had held the top spot since 1996, but the number of executions fell 57% from last year. By the way, executions nationwide fell from 85 to 66. New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani says New York's greatest strength is its diversity. In what may well be his final speech as Mayor Giuliani spoke at a church only a block away from Ground Zero. During the speech, Giuliani called for the creation of a memorial to honor those who died in the September 11th attacks. Giuliani also honored the rescue workers who went into the World Trade Center Twin Towers and never came back out. Giuliani was named Time Magazine's Person of the Year. The mayor says it's all thanks to the people of New York. We are an open city. We've never been afraid of people. We've never been afraid of people, no matter what their color, religion, ethnic background. We're a city in which our diversity is our greatest strength. It's no question. Giuliani was barred from running for a third term because of term limits. His last day in office will be December 31st when Republican Michael Bloomberg takes over as mayor. Time for a look outside. Let's head to the Storm Lab where Jeff George has our first look at the forecast. Well, after hardly seeing any rain around here for the last week and a half, looks like we're going to try to finally get some precipitation in here on New Year's Eve. And how are we going to kick off the new year weather-wise? Well, we're going to talk about that and plenty more coming up in Triple Doppler 3 weather. In New York, six pedestrians were killed and several others hurt when a commercial van hit the pedestrians, then it hit a bus. The accident happened at about 5 p.m. in the middle of Herald Square. That's a busy New York shopping district. Apparently, the van was double parked and the driver had been ordered to move his van. The van lurched forward, mowing down several pedestrians before hitting the bus. Four people died at the scene. Two more people died at a hospital later. The entire block was closed off as emergency crews worked to help the injured and clear the road. An officer in Mississippi was killed in the line of duty. 29-year-old Ron Jones was shot to death while trying to make a drug arrest. Jones was the son of a police chief. He was shot and killed as he and others tried to serve drug warrants at this duplex. The bullet hit Jones just below his bulletproof vest. Tonight, 21-year-old Corey May is charged with capital murder. May was denied bond this afternoon by a Jefferson Davis County judge. Workers at Ground Zero found another body this morning. The body was carried out like all the others with a flag draped over the stretcher. 444 people are officially listed as missing since the September 11th attacks. The medical examiner's office has issued 563 death certificates. 1,947 other death certificates have been issued without a body at the request of the victim's families. The family of a student killed during the Columbine shooting says a police officer is responsible for their child's death. A motion filed in federal court Wednesday claims Denver Police Officer Sergeant Dan O'Shea shot a student named Ror Rorbo as he fled the school. The motion cites testimony from a school administrator who says the cop told her he was afraid he may have shot an innocent student. O'Shea's handwritten report of the incident says he shot a 9mm machine gun from the base of a hill where the student was shot and killed. Twelve students and one teacher were killed in the Columbine massacre. The gunmen then killed themselves. Don't go anywhere, everyone. We still have lots more news straight ahead. Coming up, Osama bin Laden is caught on tape bragging about the relatively small team and simple plan used to attack America. We have the latest in the war against terrorism. Also ahead, if heartburn is keeping you up at night, we have some helpful advice and news that works for your health. Later in the news, believe it or not, this power line may have been what saved two lives. Stay with us. Now, time for NBC3 Weather. 
Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Well, we started off the day cloudy. We ended the day cloudy, and we had a very chilly morning. 27 was the low here in San Angelo. 35 for Abilene, 25 for Lubbock, and it was just as cold out to the east. 30 for Dallas-Fort Worth, and 32 freezing degrees in Waco. Here are the highs today, a very warm afternoon. 60 for San Angelo, 58 for Abilene, mid-50s for Midland, but quite chilly. In Lubbock, though, they only saw 45 degrees for the high temperature today. Here's what's happening right now in San Angelo. We are seeing partly cloudy skies. 45 degrees is the current temperature. A southwesterly wind, fairly light, only 5 miles per hour, and no precipitation has fallen at the airport today. Speaking of precipitation, let's take a look at some snow, the greatest 24-hour snowfall. We're going to talk about snow here because I am going to mention snow here just a little bit later in the forecast. Now, San Angelo did receive 5.8 inches way back in 1968 for their greatest one-day snowfall. Abilene saw 9.3 back in 1996. And the greatest snowfall for the state was 24 inches in Plainview, Texas. And actually, Buffalo, New York is getting that. They're getting slammed right now with a bunch of snow. And the greatest 24-hour snowfall in the whole history of the United States was 60 inches. A giant dumping in Giant Forest, California. Now, we did not see any snowfall today. Here's our 3D satellite and radar combination. It looked like we did see some precipitation. No, we see some green stuff out there mixed in with all of these clouds. However, this is actually fooling the Doppler radar. Now, there was some rain in the clouds and just below the base of the clouds, but we were so dry, our atmosphere was so parched in the low levels near the surface that once that rain did try to fall from the clouds, it just evaporated before it hit the ground. So we were this close to seeing some rain today. It just didn't quite work out though. We'll see high pressure behind this trough of low pressure here, just eating away at the clouds. And finally, we are left with some partly cloudy skies for tonight. But is there any rain in the forecast? Well, the future cast has that answer for us. Here's that trough. Now, way down to the south, high pressure will continue to eat these clouds away as we step into tomorrow. That's why we're going to see quite a bit of sunshine High moves off, we see a series of highs and lows roll through. Here's another trough of low pressure that will pass through Saturday, and that's going to cool us off. It's almost going to act like a front. Those temperatures are going to plummet to around the 50 degree mark for Friday afternoon. High pressure will keep us partly cloudy on Saturday, but this front is going to step right into the region here come Sunday night and give us a mixed bag of precipitation. More on that in a minute. Right now, let's take a look at your Texas travel forecast for tomorrow. Up near the Panhandle in Lubbock, they'll see 60 in sunny skies, 61 for El Paso, low 60s for DFW, mid to upper 60s here on the coastal bend in the Houston area, all kind of sunshine. Look at that, near 70, nice and toasty degrees in the San Antonio area. Here's what's in the cards for us tonight. Around the Concho Valley, Sherwood will see an overnight low of 29, 28 for Mason, 28 also for Roosevelt, and 30 for Sonora under partly cloudy skies. And we'll see partly cloudy or mostly sunny skies on tap for tomorrow with 67 for Sherwood, 68 for Sheffield, 64 for Calf Creek, and 66 for Pear Valley. 28 for tonight, another freezing night. Northwesterly winds at 10 to 20. Miles per hour tomorrow, we will see a high of 67. Nice and warm, mostly sunny. That is a very, very warm winter day. A westerly wind at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Just another great day, an awesome day to go out there and catch those great after Christmas sales or make some exchanges or returns. Maybe even that fruit cake that you got. Here is your five day forecast. Now, not much really happening here over the next few days. Here's the scoop on the weekend. Now, Sunday, we're not going to see any precipitation, even with that front passing through, but behind the front, We'll see some unstable air and we'll have a 20% chance of some mixed precipitation. Any snow that will fly on Monday will be mixed with some rain, so it's definitely not going to stick. And by Monday afternoon, it will be just all rain shower activity. And there's only really a 20% chance of that anyway. Tuesday, the baby new year helps to roll in the new year, usher out this year, and bring in or ring in 2002. And we're going to start off the year on a cold note. 48 for the high, 24 for the low. James, right back to you. Today, today, the Arab language television station Al Jazeera released the entire 34-minute tape of Osama bin Laden. In the tape, bin Laden says whether he's dead or alive, America is doomed. NBC's Peter Ford has the latest from Jalalabad, Afghanistan. Osama bin Laden brags about the attack on America on September 11, saying it was done with only 19 high school graduates and cost the United States more than a trillion dollars. The U.S. wants to know when the tape was made. 
and if it holds clues to bin Laden's whereabouts. We do know of certain knowledge that he is either in Afghanistan or in some other country or dead. And, and we know of certain knowledge that we don't know which of those happens to be the case. As the hunt continues to focus on the Tora Bora caves near here, Assistant Defense Minister Rashid Dostum says his forces will search the entire country to find bin Laden and his followers. We are ready to go anywhere all over Afghanistan. I'm ready to send 1,000, 10,000 and even 15,000 troops. Whatever is needed to find the remaining terrorists and put an end to the remaining Al-Qaeda and terrorist networks. Twenty captured terrorists were brought in from Pakistan today to the U.S. Marine POW camp at Kandahar Airport. Already, 37 are held there, and another eight are on the U.S. Marine ship USS Peleliu in the Arabian Sea. And Guantanamo military base in Cuba is about to take more. I, I, I would characterize Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, um, as the least worst place we could have selected. And today, the Pentagon released before and after photographs of a Taliban compound destroyed by a U.S. airstrike on Wednesday. Military sources tell NBC News that a shoulder-launched missile was fired at four helicopters carrying General Tommy Franks and his entourage last Saturday as they flew to Kabul for the inauguration of Hamid Karzai and his new Afghan government. The helicopters took evasive action and dodged the missile. No information yet on whether or not the missile was fired by Al-Qaeda or Taliban. In Jalalabad, Peter Ford, NBC News. The holiday season is a time when lots of people run up debt on those credit cards. College students are especially vulnerable. NBC3 reporter Pam Percival has more in tonight's Family Connection. Many credit card companies aggressively target college students, filling their mailboxes with pre-approved credit applications. Experts say it's fairly easy for students to get several credit cards, even without any income. Um, yeah, it is way too easy to apply and to get a credit card. And the scariest part about it is that you can spend so much, but you're only going to make, you know, everyone's only making so much. And what's scary is you can't, you think you can pay it back, but it, it's really tough. And Some students do manage their credit cards responsibly, but others can get so far into debt that they set themselves up for financial failure even before graduation. Yeah, a lot of people pay attention to the due date and what the minimum payment is, and they're not actually looking if they're asked for a $25 minimum fee that the finance charge could be 17 of that 25. So it really adds up. It can take a very long time to pay it off. Easy it's student access to credit cards has become such a problem that Congress is considering a bill to deal with the issue. The College Student Credit Card Protection Act would limit credit lines to 20% of a student's annual income. That's unless a parent or other adult co-signed for the card. If a parent does co-sign, the card company would have to get the parent's written permission before increasing the limit on the card. This is important for parents because debt incurred by students can sometimes cause trouble for parents. But parents are taking a risk if they're giving their own credit card because if something happens, there's a huge amount sent, uh, spent on it. There is a bill to pay because it is technically their debt. So I think Abilene Christian University offers its freshman students some counseling about personal finance, but school officials also urge parents to talk to their kids about managing money before they come to college. You know, we, we are trying to set out several conversations that parents need to have with their students before they come. Uh, one of those has to do with finances, and then a part of that uh, would be the whole issue of credit card uh, issues related to maybe it's the first time they've received an invitation for a credit card it's pretty tempting ordinarily the balance is low but nonetheless it's pretty easy to use that and max it out and maybe even get a second and a third credit card credit counselors also urge parents to talk to kids about money and credit well, I think sitting down and talking to them is important because sometimes people just don't want to talk about money, so the kids are all of a sudden at college and never have discussed it. Um, people are resistant to talk about it, but it's important to sit down and maybe even before they graduate high school, try to put them on their own budget to where they're aware, you know, of what, the, what expenses can be. As we head to the break, here's a look at tonight's Holiday Home. Stay with us. We're working harder for you in Nolan County, Coke County, County. Extra 
The pain of heartburn keeps a lot of people awake at night. It's a digestive condition that should not be ignored. NBC3 health specialist Deborah Ferguson has more in tonight's news that works for your health. Lee Lewis suffered with heartburn for years. You'd wake up in the middle of the night and you'd have this burning in your chest. Those restless nights would leave him sluggish in the morning. You just think that this is something I have to live with, you know? It's, no, it's just part of my everyday existence. Probably had it for 10 years without going to the doctor. But when he had some bleeding, he got scared and finally went to see a doctor. No reason anybody should really have to suffer with this thing. If you're uncomfortable with it and it's not going away with over-the-counter medicines, then by all means, see somebody about it. Indigestion is caused by acid from the stomach that backwashes up into the esophagus. When that acid hits the esophageal lining, it causes the burning sensation. I want chicken fried steak, macaroni and cheese. Pain can be triggered by large fatty meals, chocolate and caffeine. Heartburn can often be controlled with proper use of over-the-counter medicines and lifestyle modifications, such as eliminating those tasty fatty foods. Doctors also suggest not lying down for three hours after eating, decreasing portion size at mealtime, avoiding tight-fitting clothing, losing weight if you're overweight, and stopping or at least decreasing smoking. But without treatment, the nuisance of heartburn can turn more serious for some people. The thing we worry about the most is in, in some people, it can actually predispose you to developing cancer of the esophagus. Gastroenterologist Stuart Speckler says the risks are highest for middle-aged white men. I'll have it uh, before four. Okay. But not Lee Lewis. He's changed his eating habits, he takes medication, and he's sorry he waited 10 years to ask a doctor for help. Time to check in with what's going on in sports. Alex Loeb joins us now. Alex. Well, the Central Bobcats were out in action at the Caprock Tournament, and for Brian Young, Caprock has been synonymous with MVP. Young has dominated the tournament in years past, but today the Bobcats would struggle. We'll check out the action as the news at 10 on NBC3 turns to sports. is running out. You have only a few days left to take advantage of the year-end clearance sale at Lynn Alexander's Autoplex. You can still save hundreds of dollars on your next new car or truck with 0% financing. It's the year-end clearance sale going on now at Lynn Alexander's Autoplex. I was born on the auto The all-new Dodge Ram Quad Cab, with a full-size bed, four doors that open a full 85 degrees, and the largest brakes in its class. Available only at Truckville, your Texas Dodge dealer. Now get seven-year or 100,000-mile powertrain protection and 0% APR on 2002 Dodge Ram. Hirschfeld Steel & Supply, your complete steel service center and metal building component supplier. Over 40 years of service to the steel industry, helping local businesses and homeowners. We can supply you with a truckload or a single piece from our extensive inventory. We can cut it, bend it, or roll it. From start to finish, we are equipped to help you with your various steel needs. And that's why you can count on Hirschfeld to be your steel supercenter. In the San Angelo area, call 486-4200 and we're located at 30 West 29th Street. All you care to eat and drink for only $5.49. Wow! That's right! At Mr. Gaddy's, you get all the pizza, pasta, salad bar, dessert pizza, and drinks for just $5.49. And the great news is that kids and seniors eat and drink for even less. Then, there's Gaddyland, packed with the latest and greatest in family games and entertainment, plus tons of prizes, all worth winning. Hey, who says you can't have it all? Gaddyland, the best food and fun in town. Time. Time out for NBC3 Sports. Well, the Central Bobcats may not have been going up against the Russians today, but they did hit the courts up in Lubbock in the annual Caprock Tourney, and it was not too good of a night for the Bobcats. As we take a look at the results, they lose to St. Michael's 55-62. to They will go on to play at 12 o'clock tomorrow. The girls, no luck either as they go down 55-37. They will be playing at 9 a.m. tomorrow. And as for the Lakeview boys, well, they had a a double dip today. They lost the first one to Laredo United 74-68, but came back in overtime to win 83-80 against Bastrop, and they will be playing tomorrow as well. Well, the Outlaws were in action tonight as they took to the ice with this week's CHL Player of the Week, Paul Vincent. Vincent received the honor after racking up five goals and three assists in his last two games. 
including a four-goaler versus Austin. Tonight, the club was down in San Antonio, trying to pull within seven points to the second-place Iguanas, but they were not able to do that as they go down by a score of five to nothing. It was 0-0 after the first, but the Iguanas added three in the second and two in the third. Well, after having a few days off, the Bulls resumed. And today it was a good one on paper as the 11th-ranked Stanford Cardinal took on Georgia Tech and NFL prospect George Gotze. Let me take you out to the Starbucks capital of the world as we take a look at some of the action. No score, first quarter. Watch Kerry Carter with a nice little 15-yard run right there to get him first and goal, but from there, they would struggle. as so they're going up against a brick wall. It's third and goal here, nothing doing, and on fourth and goal, folks, they're going to run it. No play action. They run it with Carter, and that's what you get for running it on fourth down, nothing. Georgia Tech would take over, and let's see just how Godsey would do. Can he make the NFL? Well, let's take a look at this nice little slant pattern right there. A nice job as they would get it down inside the 10-yard line, and then a nice little end around would put Georgia Tech up by a score of 7 nothing. Remember, Stanford ranked number 11 in the country. Georgia Tech goes up, and Godsey one more time going deep for Kelly Campbell, 34 yards for a score, and Georgia Tech goes on to upset Stanford by a score of 24-14. to and finally, turning to Major League Baseball, the New York Mets better make sure they don't get a bad case of Texas Rangeritis. See, Rangeritis is a lack of arms. It's not some horrific medical condition. It just refers to having no pitchers. Today, the Mets traded away a solid older pitcher, but what they got in return was offense and plenty of it. Today, the Mets finally came to a financial agreement as they acquired Mo Vaughn from the Anaheim Angels for pitcher Kevin Apier. Vaughn is an offensive force hitting at least 33 homers a year over the last five Except for last season, in which he missed the entire year due to a ruptured tendon, Apier, on the other hand, went 11-10 and 10 last year with an ERA of 3.57. Now, it's six. I had a trivia question for Bessa and, and for everybody out there. Where is the basement of the Alamo Loop? I was watching, and I thought about it. I've been there. There's not one. Is that right? He's correct. That is right. There's no basement. How bad is that? Some sports guys have important trivia questions, and I'm... Asking questions from Pee Wee Herman movies. It's a good That's one. Nice. Remember the Alamo, we should. Exactly. You're sick. Get well. Thank you. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be back. In tonight's final note, it was a close call for two men who say they're lucky to be alive tonight. Luckily, their plane got caught in some power lines. The men were trying to land this single-engine plane at a small airport when it ran out of gas and started to freefall. The plane got snagged in some power lines. It dangled there. 75 feet above the ground for about six hours. Finally, rescue crews were able to free the two men. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Good for them. That will do it. Thanks for choosing NBC3 San Angelo as the source for all your local news, weather, and sports. The Tonight Show with Jay Leno is up next. We hope to see you back here tomorrow. Good night. You're watching NBC, America's late night leader. RP transmissions will meet or beat. After the first of the year, if you're a teenager, getting a driver's license could be a little more complicated. And we'll show you where to go to recycle your Christmas tree next.